Here is my PV Studio Pro Transtube amplifier which I bought from a pawn shop for £35. A uh, bit of a disappointment for me this. Um, it's supposed to have this Transtube feature but uh, how well it works is another matter. I found the biggest problem I had with it is that the highs weren't high enough, there was not a lot of top on it and the lows, there wasn't really a lot of lows on it either. I know it's an open back cabinet and generally they don't have a lot of bass anyway but I just thought there wasn't enough. I'm not a great fan of these lead distortion sounds but uh, I figured if I can get a good clean sound out of it so much, that, that, that's all I wanted but that didn't seem to work. I also found in the standard, standard configurations that um, the reverb, I only needed a very small amount of reverb on there to make it sound reasonable and anything, it was just stupid when it got over to 10, even above 5 was stupid so I felt that the, that knob wasn't set properly in the design and I also found because there's no master volume on here it gets, it gets loud very quickly so in the house you could only get to maybe 3 or 4 and it's just deafening and I couldn't really use it and then I tried the effects loop insert on the, on the, on the back there with just any old effects and I found it to be so noisy couldn't use it so, and I also found the overall tone was just far too cutting, just way too harsh. And that might be something to do with this Blue Marvel speaker that PV have voiced for this particular combo. So, all in all, i have really disappointed with this unit and I came close to throwing it away, just chucking it on the tip. I'm going to land focus, there's no, nobody wants these things, do they really? So I thought, well, rather than throw it away, um, I didn't pay a lot much for it and now I know why they go for cheap money in, in the UK is because we don't like them, they don't perform very well and some people might say well this is this is made in China and it is as good, good as the ones that's made in America well quite frankly I don't care, this is the one I've got and it's not very good so I thought shall I throw it away or shall I redesign the circuits or look at the circuits and I decided to do the latter and with that in mind I'm going to tell you what I did and I transformed it, at least in my opinion from something that I couldn't use into something that's really quite good. Now the rest is just going to be sat while I describe circuits to you but there's not much to show other than the internals of this and I've got some photographs of that which you might uh, which might help. The only th one of the differences I finally made is the reverb knob which is normally here I found is pointless so I changed it to a volume knob and I'll show you how I've done that. So this now is master volume and I've found now what I can do is I can set volume to whatever I want at home for example and I can now turn the volume up on the input if you wish and try to take advantage of let's call it the trans tube in the preamp that PV hoped for because this T-dynamics here, tube dynamics, only affects the output power amp which is actually an integrated circuit anyway. Uh, it's, it looks like a quite good design but without being able to drive it hard uh, it's questionable how good it actually is so by using this master volume here now so we've got this channel feeds to the master volume the channel feeds to master volume it's much more controllable I can get a lot more turn out of it but the big thing is that I modified the circuits inside which is the purpose of this video and I'm going to show you what I've done. There's not much point in letting you hear what I've done because I think everybody's going to want to modify theirs to suit their particular guitar and their particular playing style. I really wanted something that maybe sounded like a Fender valve amp 2x12 from the 1970s, which I know is asking too much. So I looked at the circuit. These I can't manage to get the circuit diagrams for these things. And... Uh, this is the pre-amplifier, if you wish, that's, that's the part that your guitar sees. That's the tone control for the, uh, the clean channel. That's the tone stack for the clean channel. This is all the distortion channel. Uh, this is just a, a switch. Then we've got the reverb driver, the reverb circuit, a little bit of a preamp, combine and mixture if you wish. It then feeds the power circuit, so it, it goes around the effect, comes in, goes around the effects loop, goes through this uh, little uh, buffer, and then it feeds this, which is the power amp, that's the main output IC and these are a, a voice shaping and then we've got here with that resistor there, that's a, T, that's a dynamics I assume so the dynamic affects this output shape and it also affects this tone shaping circuit here 
So when I looked at all this, this looks fairly reasonable for what it is. So we're not going to do anything with that. So what I decided to do is I um, <clears throat> I needed to um, figure out why there was no top and no base. And to cut a long story short, what I found out is is that uh, the output impedance of this input circuit is not sufficiently low enough to drive the load offered by the, the clean channel or the distortion channel. So I simply put a buffer in and that, that's all I did. I used a BC184 in a common emitter mode and 3K3. And I put those, as soon as I put that in, the, the, the tops came uh, up in both channels. So that, that more or less sorted that. I have done a few other bits and pieces and other experiments, but that was the main thing that brought it all back brought the clarity back. I also made some component changes here just to get a bit more top. I also wanted a 1 mega ohm input impedance or thereabouts. So uh, I changed those two resistors from 22k to 68k. I took out C11 and I changed that, that uh, R13 there to 1 mega ohm. It does affect the biasing on this transistor but so what it wasn't sufficiently large enough to worry about. And when I did that, that made a lot of difference because I figured that PV would know how to do these tone stacks. And now I've recovered that part of the circuit, this tone stack really does tend to work. Now, moving on quickly, I decided I didn't want the reverb. There's nothing wrong with the reverb spring, but it is on the low, it's, it's, a, it's a budget version, version. I decided it wasn't much use to me. So I used that volume control there, which is the reverb level, and I took that basically out of circuit. And when I did that, I don't need that op amp, and I don't need that op amp anymore. And in that same process, I decided I didn't need that op amp there either. The only thing to watch for, there's actually a... Uh, a ground there, synthetic ground if you wish. But anyway, so I took out that up amp, that up amp, that up amp, and took the output from this one over here straight straight down to that one there. I did that mostly to take an up amp out that I didn't need. And then that brings me to here, and this is where it gets interesting, where it's uh, you'll have to sort this out for yourself basically. Um, that reverb control is now there on my circuit, so. This is a buffer or tone shaping circuit in my instance and I've just taken that capacitor out there and wired it in. Some people might say, well, there could be DC offset on there, yeah, so what, who cares, because it's decoupled elsewhere anyway. So I've used the reverb knob on the front panel and made it, that's my, now my master volume. Now here's the important thing that made all the difference to here. This op amp here is perfect for voice in the amplifier to suit yourself. Absolutely perfect. It's uh, non-inverting, but we've got... Now this is the input here, and when you can change these two values to basically to attenuate or shape the, the tone. But what I did here, this is the, the feedback loop, and I simply put in this little simple network here, uh, which is a basically a base boot circuit. Now, these are all the, the calculations I used. So I just used those little pieces there. Uh, you get this sort of shape basically what I can do I can fix the uh, I can fix the how much bass boost boost I get where the break point is and there's another break point there which we don't really pay too much attention to about the only thing that you don't change with that particular circuit is that slope now if you want to try this at home so to speak this is a very simple little circuit you can do a lot with it so what I found with that which is now in here on mine so I've got um, 330k uh, in power with 68k and 4 in 7 uh, and then I found there was a lot of bass out of, the, out of the thing at that point and I decided to try turn it down a bit. What, what makes it really useful is that this this circuit around here lends itself so easily to do that and I just simply changed that value there uh, can't remember what it is, to 22k from 56k and that gave me sufficient attenuation so now what I've got through this voicing circuit I've now got a lot more bass in the amplifier uh, the treble's been restored because I've um, changed the output impedance and used, used a buffer on the output impedance on, on that uh, input circuit there. And that has made a huge amount of difference to the whole thing. And I thoroughly recommend it. If you've got any idea about electronics, have a go yourself. What I will say is that um, this is operating at uh, 36 volts and you can get a shock off this. There's mains voltage on the, on the circuit board as well. Do be careful. You've got to know something about electrical safety else you will get a shock. Uh, the main point I'm making here is that this part, this op amp there is ideal. Go on to any website that talks about active filters based around an op amp and you'll find all the formulas, all the options you can get and you can actually voice the, the PV amp to suit yourself and it works for me.